All right, guys, today's video is for every man and woman who desires to increase the survivability rate of their long-term relationship, primarily marriage, okay, because that's the most consequential one, that, that can be the most fulfilling one. You might say to yourself, well, it's been the most hurtful one to me. Well, in a lot of cases, it is. Uh, sometimes it's our fault, sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes it's those things that go beyond uh, our powers to control. Uh, but in other cases, it's just, you know, we're dealing with very flawed human beings, you know, and um, and we make a lot of mistakes. And when we have too many mistakes close together, uh, people want to part ways, no matter how well-intentioned we are, we were at the beginning. You know, re uh, you know, relationships are kind of funny because, um, you know, it's, it's funny how they go awry. Um, and, and, and people get divorced for so many reasons. And it's funny to me how they start over again three, four, five times. I always think to myself, if I, if I had to do it over again four or five times, I, oh, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. I'm, I'm on my second marriage, but I've been married to my wife for over 21 years. We've had our ups and downs. Uh, we've had our conflicts. I'm not ashamed to say it because it's quite normal. It is quite normal. But I, I do have some experience in this matter. Uh, for very good reason, and uh, I'll also share with you some of the wisdom that was imparted to me upon seeking advice for saving my marriage, which is what it did. Okay, so, you know, like I said, people get divorced for really weird reasons. I was um, I was uh, reading uh, some divorce announcements that kind of cropped up in a book uh, that I was uh, reading that took place in the 19 year 1932, and there is a woman named Jane Thurston. She's at, she was actually the daughter of Howard Thurston, the great magician from so long ago. We're talking about the turn of the uh, 20th century. And uh, he was known for his amazing card tricks and levitation, levitation acts. But his daughter by his third marriage, Jane Thurston, uh, married a man named Harry Harris. And when she was 21, he was 29, she sued him for divorce. And the reason why is because at a party one night... She did not take his backgammon advice. Yeah, that's right. She did not take his backgammon advice. He got upset. He threw the board across the room. He picked up the ginger ale glasses, threw them at the wall, and shattered them. He ripped her clothes off in front of the guest. That's a deal breaker. There are some, there are some relationships worth salvaging. There are others that are not. And I'm going to try to help you suss out uh, whether your relationship is worth salvaging or not by what I'm going to share with you. But what I want to tell you about Jane Thurston and her husband, Harry Harris, was that when she went to court to sue him, she did not tell the judge that the year prior uh, in a Detroit hotel that her husband and her father uh, got into an altercation and her husband was nearly blinded by her father's tear gas fountain pen. Sounds strange, right? Like, tear gas fountain pen. That's who has one of those, right? And how can I get one? Because I that that sounds interesting to me. I mean, I could be equipped with that, hide that easily. But um, anyway, this guy Harry wasn't very good at relationships. He wasn't very good at relationships. Now, while this one was a little more physical, kind of violent, and and uh, and everything, uh, I have to say that a lot of us are not very good at relationships either. And the reason why is because when you put two people together for any length of time, they begin to wear on each other's nerves, no matter how much in love they were before. You know, you might have been all starry-eyed when you first met the person that you're with. All you could do is think about them. All you wanted to do was be with them in every way possible. And then you propose the idea of spending the rest of your life together. And after two years, you know, the first two years of marriage are such bliss. You know, they're oftentimes the baby-making stages, and that's why... Uh, that's why they're so fun. I have four of them. I'm not four babies anymore. They're not babies. They're all kind of grown, more or less. But yeah, that's what makes it kind of fun in the beginning because you get to try new things. Um, you know, not try new things. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? No, but you you get to um, learn more about each other, and then uh, you're you're um, you know new things are in your in your in your life like children. And so they present new challenges, and they kind of keep you going. It kind of uh, increases momentum as it goes along. But you get used to each other. You get on each other's nerves. Things start getting said that weren't said before. Uh, spouses get insensitive, and they become inattentive. 
And after four years, those shallow relationships began to drop off. And after seven years, um, you know, the even the ones that stuck around, they're beginning to get that itch where they start to think uh, maybe there was other possibilities. Maybe they settled. After 10 years, they're pretty sure they did. And if they haven't started cheating on their spouse, they've certainly started thinking about it. And so, um, you know, that's I'm not saying that's how it goes for everybody. It's not how it went for me exactly, but uh, it, it but th- this is pretty normal across the board. Let me tell you about two other. Let me tell you about two or three other divorces I read about in 1943, because this is how petty it gets. But then again, maybe it's not. There was a woman who divorced her husband because he loved detective mystery novels, and she got tired of reenacting them for him, and laying on the floor as a dead as a as a victim. So he could uh, figure out how to solve the crime. She got sick of that and divorced him. There's another woman who divorced her husband because um, he hated the power company. So he insisted on illuminating the home with candles rather than electric lights. And he insisted upon her cooking with kerosene because he hated the gas company. Well, she might have been onto something there. She might have done a good thing by getting rid of him. And there was a man who divorced his wife because he got sick of her telling terrible jokes in bed. But that's what happens. That's what happens. You know, you get sick of each other. You're not going to put up with it anymore. And you go your own way. Or at least you go a different way. People glom on to other people and they repeat their mistakes. But here's the thing what I want to tell you is before you throw in the towel, before you walk away, understand that divorce can be uh, very serious. Um, first of all, it's financially devastating. And many of you already know that. It's hard on the children. It's hard on the children. I'm not saying you should always stay. I'm not saying you should never get divorced. Some relationships should have never happened to begin with, and uh, there's a good deal of them that ought to be terminated. But you need to be, you need to be absolutely sure that you've done everything you can and that you're doing the right thing before you do it. And here's the way to find out. Here's the way to build longevity into a relationship because no matter who you're with, that's what you're going to want to do. Okay. Uh, I I got real. I got counseling for myself. Some years ago, when my my marriage was on the rocks, now I did not get marriage counseling. I don't believe in marriage counseling. I think it destroys more marriages than it helps. And um, I got marriage. I got I got counseling for myself. It's like it worked on me. And when I talked to this very reputable counseling firm who deals in this very specific um, topic, um, they helped me out a lot. They they really gave me direction. That's what I'm gonna do with you right now. Here's what they told me. And this is what you need to to solidify within yourself is you need to have what they call a five to one ratio. You need to you need to start enacting this now. The five to one ratio is you need if for every one negative experience or not experience for one for every one negative interaction you have with your significant other, you need to have five positive interactions with them. Understand that the five to one ratio is for every one negative interaction you have with them, you need to counter it with five positive reactions. I mean, interactions. All right. If you can do that, your chances of surviving, your of your marriage surviving goes up exponentially. Not only will it survive, but it will thrive because it will, it will, it will imbue the relationship with positive feelings they they will see you in a different light and by by you taking these steps they will see that not only are you trying but it won't matter to them that you're trying it, it would all it will matter to them is that you're making them feel good and the why the, re, the reason I say this is because the negative interactions we have with people are the insults that we start hurling their way the eye rolls that we give them to show that we don't give a, 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 you know, we don't think anything of their opinion. They're be, to be dismissed. Um, perhaps uh, you're verbal. Um, perhaps you're emotional. You make someone feel bad about themselves, you know, and and um, maybe maybe you're physical, you know, by either not giving affection or by being abusive. And if someone's abusive to you, you probably should really leave the relationship. But you know, those are negative interactions. And I'm sure you have a whole list of them you can, you can uh, think of in your head but um, that you've experienced yourself. But the positive interactions you can have with uh, another person is 
is complimenting them, uh, showing appreciation, showing empathy and compassion, coming alongside them and feeling their pain with them, um, uh, taking an interest in things that they do, listening to them. You know, when, when they're trying to tell you something that they're interested in uh, or about, uh, listen to them because they want you to hear them. Don't dismiss them. You know, learn to apologize. When you're wrong, tell them that you're wrong and that you're sorry. You know, that, that goes a long ways. I've had to do that with my own kids on a number of occasions. I've, in fact, just recently I had to apologize to my 21-year-old daughter because I pulled the trigger too quick and I spoke my mind in a blunt way that I shouldn't have. And I had to apologize to her. It meant something to her, I think. But that's what's important. That's what keeps things together. Not only that, you got to learn to laugh with people. Laughter is one of the things you do the most when you're courting someone, when you're spending quite a bit of time with them in the nascent stages of a relationship. Learn to do that again. Don't take yourself too seriously. And uh, learn to laugh with each other. And, um, and also, I would say, don't, uh, don't respond negatively to every, uh, to every negative display from the other person. You know, George Bernard Shaw once said, um, you know, don't wallow, don't wallow in the mud with pigs. You get dirty and they like it. It's something like that, something along those lines. And you don't need, I'm not saying that your spouse is a pig, but what the, the emphasis here is that you don't need to get in the mud and get dirty with someone else. All right? So forgive me if it sounds like I was saying your spouse is a pig. That's not certain, certainly not what I meant. But you, what, you, what I want to convey here is that uh, you have control over what you allow yourself to get sucked into. Okay? So you need to work on giving five positive interactions for every one negative one. And what this does is it gives you a number to think about. As you proceed from this day forward, you can start counting off, ticking off how many times you've been positive toward them, whatever you've been negative with them. It just gives you something to work with. Here's what uh, an actress named Simone Signore once said, and I, I would agree with her. She goes, pains do not hold a marriage together. It is threads, hundreds of tiny threads which sew people together through the years. That's what makes a marriage last, more than passion or even sex. The hundreds of tiny threads comes in bunches of five at a time. All right, just remember that. Pains do not hold a marriage together. You know, uh, your marriage will never make it if you're constantly paying someone back for the wrong they did you. Learn to forgive and control yourself, manage your expectations, and manage your emotions, and I think you'll be all right. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's meant something to you. If you've liked it, hit the like button. Share it with somebody that needs to hear it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I thank you for your time. I hope you have a great day. Stay, stay safe out there. Bye-bye.